Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Global Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am presenting a new addition to my small rockets pack. This is the ABL or ABLE uh, RS-1. It is a very simple rocket, meant to be a very simple rocket. And it is kerosene oxygen and it has won a lot of contracts so that's why I decided to make it uh, as a sort of priority because people seem to be paying for it even though it hasn't launched yet. Uh, kerosene oxygen, it, it has sort of the normal setup now, I guess, which is nine kerosene oxygen engines on the first stage, one of those engines with vacuum nozzle on the second stage, we recognize this, um, very familiar. It is only meant to uh, send up 1.35 tons to orbit, and that's the maximum. So that's what I've got on here, it's just a dummy tank with 1.35 tons. I have here my uh, the payload adapter I include in the small rockets pack with a control core and I've added tweak scale to it now so if you want to use that you should probably have tweak scale on otherwise there's no control core in the rocket itself uh, that's on the payload adapter and as far as the tank masses are concerned we didn't have that information but I based it off of uh, the procedural tanks I just went with the, ran uh, the standard procedural tank aluminum and uh, based the tank masses on that. And the contents are based on the stage times which they had in their payload user's manual. So there is a uh, payload user's manual. It does have some data, the thrust of the engines, for instance. It has the ISPs it does not have, but I'm working backwards from the payload capacity and assuming that the tanks are procedural-ish masses, right? So given that, the engines have to have a certain ISP, and we will check that out now. So you can see we're uh, stocked with 9,374 meters per second, and the question is whether that's enough. Um, you know, 1.24 thrust weight ratio off the pad. You can see we get uh, past 4 on the, at the end of the first stage, but they did not say anything about throttling. There's no indication that the engines throttle. Uh, we do have the stage times, and the expected... Uh, velocity at Miko of the first stage separation and they said 3.1 kilometers per second I assume that's surface uh, let's just try it out with its payload capacity and see what happens I have not launched it yet plumes may be wrong so this is what it looks like outside a little bit less gray than it does inside the VAB oh we've got a... hmm that that sometimes happens and I don't know why but um, it usually fixes itself on launch. Let's see. Where did the engines go? Hold on. Okay, let, let's see. Ignition. And launch. Oh, there you go. I don't know why that happens. I think it's a launch clamp thing. Well, so we're off. This plume looks fine. Still real plumes on this one. So the look of it is based on what was in the payload user's manual, including the sort of redstone stripe on the interstage, which they said was in homage to the old rockets. Now I'm sure the final version won't look quite as plain, but that's all they had in the payload user's guide. And they had a mock-up of it, and it was like this. Okay, well... In terms of surface speed, we should be close to 3.1 kilometers per second. Uh, 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 yeah, 3.1 kilometers per second, right. Yeah, Not quite there. Alright, separation and ignition. Whoop, little flick there. And let me see about the fairing separation timing. Uh, I think right now would do. <laughs> Whoa, that's a little bit more energy than I think that needed. So far, so good, though. I've assumed a darkish nozzle for this one. Um, though, it's only because of the shadow that the engine looks dark. Otherwise, it looked like some sort of metal. They had some engine details, which I worked off of. And the uh, physical look of it. So uh, this one gets uh, 356 seconds 
ISP in vacuum. The lower stage obviously gets much less than that. And 57-ish uh, kilonewtons. They specified the thrust in pounds. <laughs> oh, how cute. Anyway, um, there are supposed to be roll thrusters on here. But that's it. They didn't specify more thrusters, but I'm sure there will be. But since they didn't make it clear where or how many there are, I left them off. Especially since they only said roll thrusters. And probably for a lot of the payloads that they're launching, which are uh, military payloads, there will be, will be demand for better thrusters, unless the payload is handling that part. Again, this is the maximum payload, so we're just going straight up from Cape Canaveral, no polar orbit or anything like that. The polar orbit mass will be less. Okay, just about at the end of the burn. Again, nothing was said about throttling, so... Shut down. Uh, 251 by 189 with 132 meters per second left. If we add an RCS system to this, uh, that would probably cut down on it. So it's pretty darn close to the expected payload capacity. I don't think there's any problems here. So uh, the one thing is that I noticed that they had sort of solarish panels at the bottom of the stage on one of the views, uh, not in the mock-up. In the mock-up, it was a plain stage. But in the diagram, they had something like solar panels there, but I'm not sure what those were about and whether those were in fact solar panels or radiators or something, I don't know. Um, some panels were at the bottom there, but uh, I left it plain for now. Okay, uh, so not the most complicated model and thankfully fairly lightweight on an install. It's only like five megabytes. So yeah, not too hard to sneak into the small rockets pack. And uh, as far as putting it together is concerned, let me just uh, take everything off and start from scratch. So first we want the payload adapter and you'll need tweak scale to use this. You can use some other payload adapter like a procedural one, but this one has a control core built in. So yeah, and uh, it needed to be somewhere like that. And then we can type in RS1 and of course you have to have your payload. RS1 will get all the parts. It is a lot like Launcher Space's rocket and probably a lot of other rockets involving kerosene oxygen. It, it's very like an electron too. I mean, nine engines at the bottom, one engine at the top. It's a pattern that they figured out somehow. Um, there, are, there are mathematical reasons for it to be a good deal, but so uh, tweak it up there and then there's the fairing and then the ABL E2 vacuum, uh, negligible sea level. They didn't say anything about reigniting. And 356 vacuum. This is with kerosene. Oh, that's the wrong node. Uh, that node at the top is where the interstage adapter goes. And maybe that's part of our problems with the launch clamps too sometimes. And then there are nine nodes at the bottom. It's a tight fit with the E2s. These have 328 vacuum, 294 sea level. And, you know, that uh, it gets us the performance we need, let me put it that way. Uh, you might have to turn them so that the turbo pump doesn't poke out, but I think it's okay for most of them. Except for the ones like in the corner there. That, that one in particular probably is the worst. But yeah, anyway, so there's nine there and uh, first stage burns for close to three minutes and the second stage burns for close to five minutes. That was in the in the payload user's guide. So that is the idea. As a bonus addition to my my uh, small rockets pack, I have added a photon stage for Electron. I didn't do the Electron rocket because that uh, Super Penguin already has one, so I didn't feel any particular need to add to that. Okay, so photon interplanetary stage. It's under tanks even though it has, it has a control core. Actually, let me reverse this a little bit. We're going to have its expected payload to another planet would be 40 kilograms. And they didn't specify what propellant, but it was a bi-propellant. So oops, we need more than that. 
So given that it's a bi-propellant, I decided to go with MMH and Mon3 because it's the easiest. However, I didn't put any engines on here. There are six RCS thrusters that they indicated, and we've got those on there. I don't know why uh, this color that's coming out black should not be exactly black. I'll work on that. There are solar panels that they have on, little solar panels two on the bottom and then four on the sides there and then as far as engine you have your choice but again it's filled up with MH and Mon3 and that works with my sure strut engine pack because those uh, RCS thrusters and the one kilonewton thrusters this this one in particular has MH and Mon3 so I'm, I'm thinking something like this and then tuck it in like that would do so I didn't include the engine because they didn't specify the propellants or its stats yet and so with uh, 40 kilograms up there you get 3895 meters per second which uh, is a little bit heavy for electron and maybe we need to tone down the structural mass I don't know uh, there's a lot of things that we could tweak but for now I'll leave it like this and that would get you to another planet so there is that so maybe a lighter engine, maybe a more efficient engine than this one. This one only gets 313.7 seconds ISP in vacuum. But, yep, so that's also in the small rockets pack now. So those are the additions, and that is what I'm reporting. Uh, and, well, we'll see about this ABL or ABLE space rocket and when they decide to launch it for the first time. It, it, it apparently gets a lot of business. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.